local level election inching closer, political parties have expedited their preparation for the polls. Meanwhile, the ruling coalition has decided to backtrack from partnership with parties other than those in the coalition for the nearing election. Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama and these are the headlines of the hour. Nepotism persists in selection of candidates for local level election. Loyal members denied opportunities and compelled to quit parties. Managing rebel candidates a tough task for leadership. Election Commission begins investigating on grave answers filed against candidates. Ten parties of the 79 registered for local polls have not fielded candidates. Russian President Vladimir Putin warns any country trying to intervene in the Ukraine war will face a lightning-fast response as Ukraine allies step up supply of weapons. And Liverpool took a stride towards another Champions League final with a 2-0 victory over Villarreal at Anfield. Despite the promises of ensuring inclusive representation and strengthening democracy, major political parties feel their relatives and close one as candidates for elections. Nepotism has continued unabated, which has led to disappointed members quitting their parties or filing candidacy against the party's nomination. Parties in the ruling coalition have resorted to actions against some of their leaders who projected themselves as candidates for local elections against official candidates of the alliance. Most of such rebel candidates are from Nepali Congress itself, alongside CPN Maui Center and CPN UML. Congress members are upset with the party's decision to support Renu Dahal, daughter of Maui Center Chairperson Pushpakamal Dahal, as mayoral candidate in Bharatpur. Rebel candidates of Maui Center and UML have filed the candidacies for deputy mayor in Bharatpur and Ratnagar, Ratnagar respectively. Meanwhile, the coalition has fielded Congress leader Prakash Man Singh's spouse, Srijana, as the candidate for Kathmandu mayor, while Janata Samazwadi party chair Upendra Yadav's son, Amarendra Kumar, is the candidate for deputy mayor in Biratnagar. Likewise, near relatives of other leaders from different parties, including the opposition, have also been put forward as candidates for local election. Many deserving members of several political parties have been denied the opportunity of pursuing leadership roles in local levels as parties give continuity to nepotism and ignore the norms of democracy. In this context, in our Public Voice segment, we have asked the local residents in several provinces what they think of nepotism within political parties. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Now, investigations have begun on the grave answers filed against the candidacies registered for the local level election. Office of the returning officers are to investigate the grave answers until today. Based on the existing arrangements, if the grievances are proven, the candidates may even lose their candidacy. As per the Election Commission, grievances have been filed regarding due payments, involvement in contract projects and inclusion of names in the closed list for proportionate category of the lower house. Meanwhile, the Commission has also directed political parties to furnish the name of their official candidates in places where two individuals were registered as candidates from a single party. Meanwhile, of the 79 parties registered at the Election Commission for the local elections, only 69 have registered their candidates. Now, it is widely known that election candidates spend a hefty amount of money during their election campaigns and often the amount spent by a single candidate exceeds even the government budget. The unnecessary expenses made by candidates, experts say, raises the risk of further liquidity crisis in the country. At a time when the country's imports are skyrocketing, banking sector has reported of liquidity crisis. Central Bank has reported of depleting foreign currency reserves and the government has imposed a ban on import of various items to band-aid the degrading economy. Amid this vulnerable state, the state coffer has to bear another burden of the imminent local elections. The Election Commission has determined 750,000 rupees as the expenses ceiling for aspirants in metropolis, 550,000 rupees for sub-metropolis, 450,000 rupees for municipality and 350,000 rupees for rural municipality. Likewise, the Commission has prohibited aspirants of ward chairpersons and members from spending more than 300,000 rupees. 
If the candidates are to abide by the Commission's directive, election expenses by candidates are expected to total around 33 billion rupees. With the government allocated election budget of 16 billion rupees, a total of 49 billion rupees is estimated to be spent for the upcoming polls. This expenditure is expected to help boost economic activities. However, it is also feared that the election campaigns might be a way to legitimize black money and around 75 billion rupees official and unofficial fund is expected to be spent in the upcoming polls. Back in 2017 elections, 69 billion 420 million rupees had been spent for the election, including 50 billion 960 million rupees spent by candidates and party cadres, and 18 billion 460 million rupees spent by the government from the state coffers. Experts have also warned of illegal import of banned items. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. What's your take on the government decision to implement two days off a week? Your options are A, good for public officials, B, bad for service seekers, C, solution for unnecessary expenses. The voting is on. Type MEWS, select your option, A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.